which is seen on Wednesday nights at 9, 9 Eastern time, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's the same out here, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. Why do they say that? 9 is 9, right? Yeah. Except in the Midwest, I guess. 8. Check your paper. Yeah. He'll be hosting... <laughs> did you ever notice? No, he'll be hosting... The 35th anniversary special on the Disney Channel, which premieres this Tuesday, February the 13th. Would you welcome Harry Anderson? Okay, Harry. Why, why, why did you do that, Harry? Is that a... I think fine music speaks for itself. Yes, it does. Actually, Again, my question. Why did you... Is that is a bassoon? That's a bassoon. That's a bassoon. Well, uh, last weekend I was in Glendale and I was at a bike store. Because I, I have a nine-year-old girl and she has a bike and she's getting too big for it. So I had to get a post for the seat. Uh -huh. A longer post in the... I went to the bike store door, and there was a sign that said, back in 20 minutes, which, you know, I didn't know when he left, so... I had... I didn't know how much time I had to kill, and across the street there was a music store. So I went there to browse, and, yeah. and they were having a sale on bassoons. <laughs> you know, every bassoon must go, kind of right. thing. And, and, <laughs> now, a lot of people would walk by that and yeah. not even notice it, but... When I was 12, I learned to play a bassoon a little bit, because I was in junior high school, and I joined a woodwinds class because I wanted to learn to play uh, saxophone and be in a rhythm and blues band because right. I didn't know that white guys didn't do that. Yeah. And I got, <laughs> I got into the woodwind class and our first assignment was we had to, we had to um, learn to play a recorder. A little recorder. They, they, is that like a, a, a tin whistle like a, or? Right. They, we, had to, we had to take it home for the weekend and learn a, a scale. Right. Uh, and, and, I, and whoever played the scale best, they, they would assign instruments based on that. So I had the whole weekend free. So instead of playing a scale when I came back, I had learned, I had studied all weekend, and I had learned to play Ode to Joy, Beethoven's Ode to Joy. Oh, I haven't heard that for a long time. Through my left nostril. <laughs> through your left nostril. Which I can still do. Well, having said that... <laughs> so, I, think, I think we should say at this point... I think we might say at this point, if there are young children watching, do not attempt this at home. This is a professional... I don't even think adults should try this. That's thing. right. This, is, think anyone this is a professional nose flutist. So I, I went back and I did this at a woodwinds class, and it grossed out this teacher so much <laughs> that she gave me the bassoon to play, uh, which is the hardest and least rewarding instrument, and hoping I would quit, which I did. But there I was in this music store in Glendale, and yeah. I was telling this guy this story, right. and I demonstrated with one of his recorders, so I ended up buying a recorder, because you pretty much have to. Once you, you've blown your nose Once you've stuck it up your nose, yeah, you, I think you own it, is the way it goes. Uh, and so then he started talking to me about bassoons and why he was so... He thought I should... He, he hustled me. And, really. you got, and you got stuck with well, the bassoon. Well, he said they came from East Germany, and, you know, that's hard to get things from East Germany, and it's occurred yeah. to me several times since that, right. you know, they're going to be selling everything to... I mean, that's true. But I, they, he gave me lots of free cork wax with it, so if you need any, and... This, and, is, uh, this, is, this does what now? It's, it waxes your cork. <laughs> so things... I'm sorry they wax my cork wax. Fit, fit the That's a Groucho cork. Marx said that once. I'm going to wax your cork. So the point is, uh, when I, I bought it, and I, and I brought it home, and my wife looked at it, and when, I, when she realized that I'd forgotten to get the bicycle seat and had a bassoon, yeah. I realized that if I played it here, that it was at least tax-deductible, and that if... You can, even though I don't play it very well now... 
If you have me back in three months and I played better because I've been practicing. Well, I thought you, you, you I don't know whether you chose the best night for this. We have Eugene Fodor on the show, you know, who's a trained classical musician. Well, then you could have told me that before I brought it out. Well, I would. <laughs> I kind of wish I had it, but it, it, it's not an, well, it is not an, easy, instru it's not an easy instrument to play, is it? It's not. Didn't somebody no. once say that about the bassoon or, or was it about the oboe? It's an ill wind that no one blows good? Well, yeah, they say actually if a murder occurs in an orchestra, they check out the oboe players and the bassoonists because yeah. you create so much pressure in your head playing it. It's true. You actually can pop little brain cells. Well, this is the first uh, for us. We've been doing this show for many years, and that's the first time anyone has come out here and opened with a bassoon solo. I had a suspicion. Yeah, and, <laughs> and certainly well done. Thank you. Uh, well, we're going to take a break, and we're coming right back, folks. Oh. with Harry Anderson, actor, bassoon player. Bassoonist. 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 That, would, that would be the official title, a bassoonist, right? Not a bassooner, yes. a bassoonist. Uh, idiot. <laughs> you also started, I know, as an amateur magician. Yes. As well as one then of became our hobbies we have magician. in common, then became yeah. professional at it. And yeah. uh, you got anything uh, good enough? I brought a trick. Yeah, now see, this is after the, after the uh, recorder thing. This is going to be very odd. Because you do bizarre things. Well, I've, yeah, I do. You know, yeah. you do the, the, the nail and you do the thing through the, yeah. through the arm and all these bizarre things. That's true. Um, this, is, this is maybe what got me pointed that way. This is one of the very first tricks I ever learned. Uh -huh. Now, this is, in, 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 after the thing that I did with the recorder, this is going to seem like I have some kind of fixation, which I don't. But, um, again, this is kids shouldn't try Does this. Does it have to do with body parts again? I mean, Well, kind of, yeah, yeah. It's called uh, The Four Little Beans. It's an old, old... Piece of magic. Four beans. I've got like you have four little beans. Four little, there. That takes four little beans, and you can kind of come in here and <laughs> telling a camera to come in when you're going to do close up. It's like Gary Hart saying, "Follow me, guys." Sure, sure yeah. I have nothing to hide. All right. Um, okay, four little beans. Four little beans. You got four it. Little beans. Four little right. beans. Got to lubricate them. Mm-hmm. Got to make them. No, they've got to. I can't be dry. Uh, make them slick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Three little beans. Three little beans. Uh, okay, they dry out. Mm -hmm. So each time you've got to make yeah. them slick. I see that. Two little beans. Two little beans. Two little beans. <laughs> what? Dying. <laughs> got beans. Yeah. No, my ears. Yep, yep. You got a bean in each ear. It's hard to hear. <laughs> Last bean. One, one little bean. bean. One, one little bean. Two in your mid, one in your nose. <laughs> well, look about. Is that gonna guess? Kind of gonna. Once again, if there are little children watching, do not go out into the kitchen and get these things and scream. Are there two-year-olds watching? There I might thought I'd be. be safe doing it at this no, hour. No, we actually, they start them this young to watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go into Don't the kitchen and stick those things in your nose or so forth. That is... Right. Unless you know exactly what you're doing. That's right. <laughs> What's the rumor about you moving to Seattle? I heard. Oh, we are. We're going to build a, um, a home up in Seattle, and my family's going to move But up. you're not lo leaving the show, are you? No, 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 that's... <laughs> yeah, there's, there's this misunderstanding that I'm leaving Nycourt. I'm going to commute to Nycourt. Why did you decide to move to Seattle? It's a lovely city. Well, but... it's, yeah, my wife and I met up in Ashland, Oregon, up in the, the northwest. We love yeah. it up there. And, yeah, yeah, and uh, we'd like to raise the kids somewhere that's green and... and uh, that's fine. And, <laughs> And, and nice, so, um, I'll, uh, you know, I mean, well, you live in Malibu. It takes yeah. you two hours to come to town. It'll take me two hours to come to town. So. I guess, actually, you get on an airplane, you can be here. And... Commute and, and, uh, and do night court and, and then uh, uh, live up in beautiful, in the area, the area of Seattle. It should be great. And, and raising kids up there should be sensational. Yeah. Okay. We'll take a break. We're coming right back. Bobby Slade's here. Eugene Fudo.